Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and give God a big praise in the house tonight. God has been so good. We are just getting started tonight, but we've already had an amazing time thus far. And as we are here in the sanctuary for convocation, this is a time where people gather together in a formal setting. And that definition is good if you're just talking about people getting together like a fraternity or a sorority. That definition is good if you're just talking about people uh, doing business and they have a large gathering. We're not just a convocation. We're a holy convocation. And when you're a holy convocation, you come into the house of God to meet God, to hear a word from the Lord, to get a prophetic insight, to know that God is in the place, to give you strategy. Oh, we're talking about a holy convocation. And as we are gathered in this sanctuary, we are positioning ourselves to receive what God has for us. And I'm reminded that when I looked at the sanctuary last night and I was praying for this conference and the theme that our bishop has given us is revive. And the Lord began to open up my eyes and he began to show me that people are coming into the sanctuary, leaders, those that are watching online, ministries, coming in the sanctuary, not wanting to give up, not wanting to quit, not saying I'm tired, but just coming in the sanctuary to get revived, to get refreshed, to go back out and do what God has called them to do. That is why we're here at Holy Convocation. We might be a little parched at times, but it's all right. Ezekiel the prophet was able to speak to some dry bones and the army got on up and did what they're supposed to do. And that's what we're doing tonight. As we are here at Convocation online and right now, we're here because God has called us to convene together. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. So we had an amazing week this week and during Holy Convocation. If you're anywhere near Perfecting Church, find yourself here in the house of God. If you're watching online and you know you're right up the street, come on in. The presence of God is here. Welcome one and welcome all to Holy Convocation 2023. <laughs> We're so happy to see everyone in the sanctuary tonight. And to everyone who is joining us live on our cyber sanctuary, please take a moment and hit your share button because we want convocation to go all around the world. Make sure you engage. We were all around the world last night and we're going all around the world again. And make sure you do your part as you share and you like. Uh, last night we had a, quite a few people watching actually. And tonight we're gonna have even more, amen? Well, let us pray. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor. We thank you for your faithfulness. Father, according to your word in Psalms 138, you said, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. You said in your word that this is my comfort and affliction, that your word has revived me. You said that we will never forget your precepts, for by them, you have revived us. And so Lord, as we sit in this house, as we watch online, we ask that you will meet us right where we are. Father, we come into your presence with power and with grace. We thank you that we have power over all the power of the enemy. And tonight we stand in full assurance that your presence is here. We stand in full assurance that you are God and you are God all by yourself. We thank you that as the word comes forth, as praise and worship comes forth, that you will show up mightily. Father, we have a spirit of anticipation. We have a spirit ready to receive that which you have for us. Father, we will not shrink back, but you strengthen us. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And Father, we bow before you tonight just to say, have your way. Move the way you want to move. Do it the way you want to do. 
and we will be sure to give you all the glory because there is none like you. There is none like you. You are God all alone. El Elyon, we come unto you. El Shaddai, and we give you honor for it. In the precious, matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. Well, this time we're going to have Pastor Desmond Fuzmon, all the way from Kimberley, South Africa. Come on. Perfecting Worship International. Well, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a good God bless you. Let's give the God, our God a good hand of praise because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles, would you please turn with me to Hosea chapter 6. Greetings to our Bishop-elect Marvin Winans and everybody in the house and those of you who are joining us uh, virtually, be greeted. Those of you in Africa, we see you and we say thank you for joining us. Reali Dumedisa in Jesus' name. Chapter 6, verse 1 up to 3. Come. And let us return unto the Lord, for he had torn, and he will heal us. He had smitten, and he will bind us up. Verse 2. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, who's ready to take it higher? It's time for praise and worship. And remember, we don't praise for the camera. We're not praising for our people. We're praising to give God the glory. And we're praising so that demons would tremble. We're praising in our worship so that we give him the glory because he deserves it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. For the word of the Lord says, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what I see or how I feel. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing. I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Raise your hands if you're breathing on tonight. You have a right to praise God on tonight. Hallelujah. Sing, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. And His praise shall continually be in my heart. No matter what I see. No matter what I see or how I feel. As long as I'm breathing. As long as I'm breathing. Oh yes, I'm breathing. I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing. As long as I'm breathing. Oh yes, I'm breathing. I'll bless the Lord. Hey, oh magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together.
Is that your testimony tonight? His loving kindness is better than life. Glory to God. Well, wasn't the mass PFI mass choir amazing last night? I don't know about you, but I love choirs. And we see oftentimes the churches now don't have choirs. We don't have one. And so when I come to perfecting, one of the things I love is the choir. And when I come to PFI, I love the mass choir. Well, here is PFI mass choir as they give us a selection. Give them a hand.
got to learn how to prophesy to yourself. When we speak that song, he keeps on blessing me. Sometimes you can look at your bank account, it doesn't really feel blessed. But when you start declaring that over your bank account, he keeps on blessing me. You start seeing things shift. When you say my cup is full, God starts shifting it. Sometimes it's just voice command, voice identification. And as you begin, can you just say it one more time? He keeps on blessing me. Say it one more time. He keeps on blessing me. Even when I don't feel like it at times, he keeps on blessing me. Can you promise I'm not paying off the way? and an enabling ability to do things you cannot do in your own strength. He keeps on blessing me, amen. Well, this time, I wanna take this opportunity as we bless God for our leader, as we bless God for our overseer, a man of prayer, a man that hears the voice of God, a leader that is not afraid to make a stand against the enemy. I'm talking about a spirit-led prophet of God. Can we give a big hand praise for our leader, Bishop Marvin L. Winans, and his lovely wife, First Lady Deneen Winans. God bless you. Let's, we can do better than that. That's the candlestick of PFI. Amen. We'll remain standing because we also want to appreciate all of our PFI pastors and as we honor the spouses of our pastors as well, uh, the wonderful husbands and wives of our PS pa pastors. Can we give our PFI pastors a big hand? And we're not done yet. We have to give honor to whom honor is due. We certainly want to give honor to our international mother, Mother Dolores Winans. God bless you, woman of God. God bless you, woman of God. So who was a, you may be seated. Who was a part of the general session today? <laughs> Wasn't it rich? Pastor Daryl Blair did an excellent job as he taught servant leadership. Let's give him a big hand as he comes at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. If he's been good, you ought to make some noise. No, let me say it again. If he's been good, you ought to make some noise. You ought to just look at somebody and tell him he's not done with me yet. No, tell him again, he's not done with me yet. In other words, there's still some stuff that God is getting ready to manifest. I don't have to wait till I get it to praise him. I can praise him right now because I'm crazy enough to believe it's going to happen. Woo! All right, y'all please be seated. We have to stay to the script. Any, was anybody like me last night? You just had a flashback of some stuff that has not yet come to pass. No, I, I, you, you had a flashback of a word that has not manifested yet. Then all of a sudden you just went to praising God because you knew it was on the way. Woo! Amen. He keeps on blessing me over and over and over and over and over 
and over and over. Y'all trying to make me believe that it's going to happen. Y'all, please take your seat. Grab your neighbor and take your seat, please. Every turn I turn around. Every time I turn around. somebody because of that praise it's coming quicker it's coming sooner I say tell somebody it's coming quicker 
and it's coming sooner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he can't, no, 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 Come on, come on, pull it in, pull it in. Please take your seat. Please take your seat. Please take your seat. Said I won't let go until you bless my soul. That's why some of you still going. Come on, grab your neighbor. Come on, come on, my sisters and brothers. Come on, give the God a praise in this place. Clap those hands like you know you have victory. Psalms 47 and 1 says, clap your hands, O ye people. Second part says, shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Sound like you're victorious. Let the devil know you're victorious. Let the devil know you're a winner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please take your seat. Come, come on, come on, Sister Cindy. Please. I think I need to sit down. I saw the bishop dancing. Then I thought about what the devil meant for evil. God turned it around and he used it for good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. We give honor to God. We just going to. Come on, we just going to try to put that on a pause just for a minute. It's hard, but, but we're going to try to hold. We got to move on, right? Because if not, I feel like if I stay there just a little longer. So glad to be here. We are here to, I forgot why we were here. <laughs> we're here to talk about serving. We're here to talk about serving. And Sister Cindy going to start us because we're here yeah. to talk about serving. <laughs> Praise God. We are here to talk about serving. Yeah, we're going to get past that. So uh, Pastor Blair and Pastor Ronnie Lee and myself, we had the honor of going around to all of our PFI churches. Come on, come on up here, Pastor Lee. 
we had the honor of going to all of our PFI churches and really encouraging uh, everybody to come and serve at Holy Convocation. And it was so amazing, our journey together. And just to get a chance to meet all of our brothers and sisters and go into the churches because our because we have a servant's heart and we wanted to convey that message to all of our brothers and sisters about how important it is to serve and that this is our convocation, not just perfecting church, but perfecting Fellowship International's convocation. Amen. So let's give a incredible round of applause to all of our volunteers. If you are serving, if you have already served, if you're going to serve, can you stand? Everybody who's serving, all of our volunteers for PFI, please stand at this time. And let's say amen for all of our volunteers. As a result of us going out to all of our PFI churches, don't, don't, don't sit down. As a result of us going to all of our PFI churches, our volunteerism increased 100% for Holy Convocation 2023. If you are a member of Perfecting Church, sit down. If you're a member of Perfecting, sit. Everybody else, all other volunteers remain standing. And look at how many volunteers there are up in the balcony. You don't see them. There are some that's working in the kitchen. They're working up in our children's ministry. We have increased our volunteerism 100% for PFI. You can be seated. My brother, I saw him earlier. He's back in the back. Another guy on security. He literally was here this afternoon, and he was like, I haven't found my, my, my ministry leader yet, and I haven't served. So we took him to security, the representative, and before the end of our power, he was standing right there serving <laughs> during service. And it's just that simple. And so even if for those that are here tonight from our PFI churches, if you have not connected with the ministry leader yet, if you have not served, if you only serve one time, if you serve one time, you have made Holy Convocation 2023 a success. Amen. You can pat yourself on the back and say, I made Convocation a success. So if you have not connected with the ministry leader yet, we want you tonight, after service, go to the Gospel Bistro. The ministry leaders are going to be there. They're going to meet you, they're going to greet you, and they're going to give you your assignment. It's over 20 places to serve, so there's a place for everybody. Amen? Amen. And then on Thursday morning, we are so excited to have our volunteers breakfast. We are going to come together. We're going to fellowship. We're going to meet one another know where we're from, and it's just going to be a wonderful time. So see your ministry leader for your ticket for the breakfast on Thursday morning. Amen? Amen. And again, give yourselves a hand for what you're doing at Convocation. Also, we're so excited about our volunteers that on Thursday, somebody say Thursday. Thursday. Wednesday. 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 Say Wednesday now. Wednesday. Prayer at the curb. I said prayer at the curb. We're going to take what we do in here, take it to the curb, and we're going to minister to a thousand people in two hours. Watch this. We're not just asking you to go, but every PFI pastor, you're standing. We're going to the curb with you. Come on. The pastors are going with you. We're going to pray. Not only that, but we're giving a huge Giveaway, food drive tomorrow. Somebody say a, a huge food giveaway. Huge food giveaway. So we're going to pray, then we're going to feed them. We're going to pray, then we're going to feed And we're planning to give 8,000 pounds of food away tomorrow. Come on, Perfecting Fellowship International. Let me hear you make some noise. We're giving away 8,000 pounds of food. Woo. Now, now listen, we need you to help us. Tomorrow is going to be dual duty. Tomorrow at 8 a.m. we have our morning glory with the one and only Pastor Jacqueline Denise Ray. But we also need volunteers, especially our brothers, to come at 8 o'clock in the morning. We need your assistance to help us with the food. And ladies, we need you also 
to join us to help us uh, put the bags together. We want to make sure that we're in prayer together. Come get a little prayer and then come help us put the bags together so we'll be prepared at 2 o'clock to go do what God has assigned for us to do here in the city of Detroit, Michigan, while we're here at Perfecting Fellowship International Holy Convocation 2023. And right after the hour of power, we'll hit the corner. We'll learn how to witness in 30 seconds. This is going to be incredible, so we're asking everybody, listen, what do you think it would look like if all of us? Amen. Now watch this. They talk about everything else. Let's, let's make some noise tomorrow. Let's take over Van Dyke. Let's take over Nevada. And let's get out there and let's pray and let's give away food. I'm so honored to be a part of PFI. Clap your hands for PFI. And I've had the privilege to be a part of a fellowship or two, but I, one of the things I love most about PFI and our bishop is that we have something that's portable. What we just talked about, pastors and church leaders, is something and the intent and the goal is to take it back to your church. What you see happening here ought to happen in your church. Your church ought to be a microcosm of this. So when we're praying on the curb, when we're handing out food, when we're witnessing in 30 seconds, we get to go back to our church. I need to take that back to Nehemiah, and we can do that in our local area, and people will celebrate what we're doing, and we can shout because we got it from where? PFI. Clap your hands for PFI. Praise the Lord for PFI. I was just talking to one of my members. She's on the choir, and she says she has never experienced something like this. We're coming all the way from Orlando, Florida, and we have our PFI family. And just the fellowship itself is amazing. It's pure, and it's a place that you can come to grow, to learn, but the fellowship part is so beautiful and important. But at this time, we want you to give your attention to our announcements and look at the video screen. Perfecting Fellowship International welcomes one and all to Holy Convocation 2023. Get ready to be revived this entire week during powerful morning, afternoon, and evening worship experiences. You still have time to register for Holy Convocation. Register tonight and receive your HC 2023 packet, gift in person, and virtual admittance to tomorrow's general session, Thursday empowerment session, and terrific discounts and deals in the bookstore. But wait, there's more. Your registration also includes the Thursday night singing shepherds concert. Don't delay. Register at www.pfi.world or in the convention center. Morning Glory with Pastor Denise Ray was powerful, and it only gets better tomorrow. Rise and shine for Morning Glory tomorrow at 8 a.m. You won't regret it. We're excited for tomorrow's general sessions at 9 a.m. with PFI's own Pastor Reva Watkins teaching, It's Not About Me, followed by Pastor Donnie McClurkin teaching, This Is Us. Register tonight. Our day continues tomorrow in another electrifying hour of power service all the way from London, England. Get ready for Pastor Dion Lamont. You'll be amazed at what can happen in just one hour. Parent your child will enjoy the fun zone while you enjoy evening worship services, interactive learning, fun activities, and yes, even snacks. All in the zone. Loving and caring staff awaits your child. Register them today. PFI presents a big food giveaway in prayer at the curb tomorrow at 2 p.m. We're excited to show the love of Jesus Christ as we give away tons of food. Everyone is invited to join our efforts. If you would like to participate in any facet, please sign up and receive your t-shirt in the lobby following tonight's service. We're excited to announce something new to the convocation. It's a volunteer's breakfast, Thursday at 9 a.m. This is going to be a great fellowship and opportunity to meet and greet brothers and sisters from PFI churches as we work side by side this week. Admission is free. Visit the convention center to obtain your free ticket. 
Thank you for surfing. Back by popular demand, it's the Singing Shepherds Concert. The talented PFI pastors presenting their best through song. Bishop Winans, Pastor Donnie McClurkin, Daryl Blair, Eric Douglas, just to name a few. And what would Singing Shepherds be without its host, B.B. Winans? In person or virtual tickets available tonight at www.pfi.world. You don't have to look for food following tonight's service because the Gospel Bistro will be open. Delicious food and desserts are only a few feet away. We'll see you in the Bistro. Shop tonight for wonderful items in the bookstore. Water bottles, t-shirts, and other great finds. Registered delegates will receive special discounts and the PFI Pastor Special of the Night. Let's get ready to be revived tonight as we enjoy the music ministry of Maurice Yancey in one accord and a powerful word from Dr. Valerie Daniels Carter. Welcome again to Holy Convocation. Amen. Holy Hog Convocation. Come on, see, we've got another hand praise. We have a lot going on here at Holy Convocation 2023. Well, last night, uh, Bishop Donnie McClurkin, Pastor Donnie McClurkin, he gave a wonderful uh, special for the ladies. But I think I can beat that tonight. Come on now. Tonight we're going to have the Pastor Reva special. And the reason why, ladies, because we have Dr. Valerie in the house. Woohoo! And our bishop is having me facilitate, so we can definitely call tonight Ladies' Night. Am I right? All right, ladies. So for the ladies who are registered for only $40, you get your choice of a PFI Lady or Revive Bling shirt, a Bling water bottle for only 40. That's over 50% off. And that's not all. You will also get a free lipstick pen. And now, Pastor Donnie, that is the special. Amen. Oh, here they are. I didn't even see you all here. Look at the shirts here, the pen. And so for tonight, I want to gift two ladies, two ladies, the special. And I just want to see who came further than, who came from California? Where? Okay, I'm gonna give you, a spe I'm gonna give you a special. Come on. And, and I, Oh, okay, I'm going to give you the special as well. All right, so can we give them a big hand praise? So right after, can we? Because ladies, we got to stay together, amen? Amen. Well, this time we're going to have our favorite PFI Mass Choir with another selection. Let's give them a hand.
count on him. Can you do that again, the yeah, yeah, yeah? Because if I can sing, that's what I'll be coming up here saying right now. You can count on him. Come on, can you give God a big hand right there? Can you do that one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. never leave you nor would he forsake you you get an understanding that he is your provider in spite of he's going to care for his children and when you understand that as I sow into what God does in the time of famine I'm going to be all right see this world system will fail every time but the kingdom of God will keep you every time You've got to understand that when the banking system fails and the dollar fails and cryptocurrency starts rising up and we don't know which way to turn, but when you trust in God, the kingdom of God will show up and Jehovah Jireh, he will provide for you. The word of God said this is our time for giving right now. Come on, let's give God a big hand. This is worship. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, remember this, whosoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a what? Cheerful, Cheerful giver. And then the Bible says here, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, have all that you need, you will abound to every good work. So at all times, all our needs will be met and we will abound in every good work. That is why we should not envy the wicked. That is why we should not fall after the prey of this culture, but we ought to counter culture with God. We ought to get in a posture to say, I don't have to chase likes. I don't have to chase social media. I don't have to chase people. All I have to do is bow down before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I give unto him my worship. I give unto him my tithes and offering. I sow into the kingdom of God. And God said, then I will bless and then I will provide. He is our Jehovah Jireh. Amen. And we give to God because he is great. That's why we give. And tonight, I want to admonish you to give tonight. How many know that PFI is good ground? Yeah. Come on. For those that are in person, giving cash, check, or credit card, uh, you will need an envelope. Please raise your hand, and the ushers will serve you at this time. The ways to give are on the screen. If given by Cash App, it is dollar sign perfecting fellowship. You can also go online to www.pfi.world and click the donate button. If given by PayPal, 
send money to at Perfecting Fellowship. And it's important that is you're going to give by Cash App to make sure you're giving to Perfecting uh, PFI, be Perfecting Fellowship International. Even if you're a member of Perfecting Church, still give to PFI. This is where we are, PFI. If you're here from another church, uh, Majestic Life Church is here in the house. We do not sow a seed to Majestic Life Church tonight. We sow it to PFI. Amen? Amen. So let's make sure that we have that clear. And everyone giving by envelope, as you are writing out your seed, as you are preparing to give, make sure that you write legibly so it can be read by those that will receive your seed. How many are expecting a harvest? Yeah. Got to expect it. I'm telling you, when I say I am a living witness that God will provide, he will restore, he will multiply, he will increase the fish and the loaves of bread. Amen? How many are still writing? How many are still writing? How many are still uh, typing in their phone? Is anyone not finished? Because we do not want to rush worship. Take your time. Amen. Would you please stand to your feet? And would you just hold your seat up in the air? so that we will pray over this seed, amen. Father, we thank you that this seed is worship unto you. We ask that as each individual has selected a seed to give to you tonight, that it's planted in good ground, that it shall produce a great harvest. We direct our seeds even now that you will multiply and increase them. Father, we thank you even now that in the time of famine, because we have sown, that we will be reaping harvest continually. Father, we call this seed blessed in the name of Jesus, and we give you the glory and the honor for it. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. But this time, if you would pass your seed down to the aisle, or I do that right. So if you can pass it, everyone, you can pass it to your right. Pass your seat down to the right, and the last person in the aisle will keep standing, and the ushers will receive your seed. If you're still on the aisle, please keep standing until the usher receives your seed. watching online right now our cyber sanctuary this is your time to give as well and if by chance you are watching the replay so see it in this good night this good word tonight that's coming forth to know that there is a move of God in the atmosphere. God is going to move mightily tonight. 
Well, I'm getting ready to ask our leader to come, but before I do, I just want to say a little bit of what PFI means to me. Last year, I had the privilege of being mantled to PFI. Come on. <laughs> I mean, you may not get excited about it, but I'm excited about it because I understand what it means to be covered. I understand what it means to have a fellowship. I understand what it means for our members. It's not just for pastors to have a fellowship. It's not just for the pastors to get together. Uh, PFI is for the members as well to get together and build relationships that will last. And one thing about Bishop Marvin L. Winans, he is not only apostolic, not only is he a man of the word, but he's also very prophetic. And if you ever watch, come on, if you ever watch, never hesitate to celebrate the man of God, amen. And if you ever listen clearly, I listen to when he ministers and the word is so in him that oftentimes he doesn't even have to open the text. And that says a lot, especially the times that we're living in. I often think about how, you know, we're in the midst of living legends and how they have affected the world in so many ways. But as you notice, Bishop Marvin Winans never leads with what he did in the music world. Have you noticed that? He, he does, if anybody could be pumped up, if anybody could be hoity-toity, it could be Bishop Winans. But he leads with the mantle of apostle overseer. He leaves with the mantle of anointed man of God. And that means something. And so if you are a senior pastor and you're asking God for good covering, we extend an invitation to you for Thursday at 9 a.m. Meet Bishop Winans and learn more about PFI. You can confirm your attendance two ways. Send an email to admin at pfi-fellowship.com. Again, the email is admin at pfi-fellowship.com, or you can go to the pastor's check-in stand in the lobby. Well, at this time, it gives me great pleasure to honor and welcome Bishop Marvin L. Winans. <laughs> Oh, come on and praise him like you know him. solo. A couple of Tuesdays ago, the praise and worship sang this and it was over. That's been, I've been singing this every day since. I don't want you to sing intelligibly. I want you to sing thinking about what you're saying. Folk want to know why you make so much noise, why you so moving. Hallelujah. 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 Some things I could say I'm not going to say right now. But lift your hands half mass and say, Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. God 
bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is the first time I've spoken at Holy Convocation. another week I used to have a falsetto but I don't I don't have that no more but if I had one I say worthy is your name I want to personally welcome everyone to Holy Convocation 2023. <laughs> and while I was coming in, I saw folk joining us from Roanoke, Virginia. I saw people on from Arkansas. But we want to welcome all of those that are streaming live. Hallelujah. Our goal this year was to have a thousand registrants. We have over almost 600 plus, but you all can, can still join. Hallelujah. I just can't stop singing that song. And oh my, 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 my. Last night. <laughs> Sister Winings and I. Stand up, Sister Wine. Let's say amen for our first lady. <laughs> amen. We, was, we were last night, and I was sitting there watching. I said, I told you he could. That, that man preached all he wanted to. But it was more than just words, it was the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That was in this ah! Y'all look like y'all didn't want to go. You kept singing. And I watched till they, they cut it off. They just cut it off. Then I was happy because the Lakers lost, but that's something else. I found that out afterwards. You deserve the prayer. I was so blessed and impressed and how many people were here this morning at the 8 o'clock hour. I can't say that I'm surprised because when you have a prayer wall, you're like Pastor Jacqueline and Denise Ray. You need somebody that can help you get to the throne. We show up here at 8 o'clock, see what happens. And we heard a word from Pastor Rodney, Ronnie Lee. Hallelujah. And one of the preachers that had just that got in told me, he said, when he finished, I was crying. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> but when God can take, take you through those hard places and he leaves you there by yourself, hallelujah. You got to know he's going to bless you. Lord have mercy. And I want everyone to be here tomorrow morning for Morning Glory, followed by more wonderful general sessions. We had a wonderful time today from Pastor George Blanks of Perfecting Fellowship International telling us about witnessing. And I told Pastor Blair, I said, the Lakers law, so go ahead and teach. And he taught a wonderful lesson. 
wonderful lesson about servant leadership. How to minister when you when you hurt. How do you... <laughs> Tomorrow we will hear from Pastor Reva T Watkins. Correctly. Pastor Reva Watkins, if y'all see somebody around here looking like a, they not trying to fool you. Is your twin here? She didn't here tonight. You, you'll see when you see it. Is your mama here? Where's your mother? Stand, mama. Stand on mama today. Bless you. And we have Zach here. Zachary Timms. Come on and give God praise. He wanted to come. My, 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 I'm so happy to see him. He said, I love you. I said, I love you too, Zach. But we want to be here tomorrow. Pastor Reva Watkins and Pastor Donnie McClurkin is going to be teaching. And then we want all of those that we want you to come prepared to, to take it to the curb. Amen. Amen. Our, our guest speaker tonight is a friend of mine that I've known since I was in my 20s, I guess. So when we met, I mean, like 1981, 82. And I just want y'all to know that when I met her, she could show enough direct a choir. I mean, show enough. And uh, we praise God for the friendship that has happened down through the years. Her brother is Bishop Cedric Daniels, and uh, they were all members at the time of Bishop Hines' father's church, Westside Church of God in Christ. And the way the Lord has blessed them is just, is just unbelievable what God has done. And whenever I'm there, I'm inspired uh, because of the work that they're doing, not only in the church, but in their community. And, uh, she don't mind me telling, she, she's loaded. She has, she used to come here every now and then, you know, to check on her, her uh, uh, Burger Kings and different things that she had. She, I think she done sold all of them and now she, I called her after the Milwaukee Bucks lost. And I said, you okay? <laughs> because she's part owner of the Milwaukee Bucks. She's a minority owner. Oh, while you're standing, she's also a minority owner of the Green Bay Packers. And you're gonna see she's sanctified. Hallelujah. And we have some special guests. The first lady of, the first lady, Tina Harris of Tabernacle Nation, Church of God in Christ in Dallas, Texas. Are you here? Would you stand? Tina, first lady, Tina Harris. Is she right there? Let's hear it for First Lady Tina Harris. <laughs> Tina, I ain't gonna say nothing, you, you, you're in Dallas. She's a former member of PC. <laughs> and we also have Supervisor Al Aletha Taylor from Michigan Southwest Third Jurisdiction. Where is she? Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to hear from Maurice Yancey and One Accord. He sang the song last night, so I'll catch him on Pastor's Singing Shepherd tonight. We'll do that then so we can go home with the prize. I am so delighted. 
I'm so, <laughs> I'm so delighted for all of these pastors. Tomorrow we will take the time to introduce you and welcome you. It is impossible. The thing that uh, was so rewarding to me last night is that convocation went forth without a hitch and I was not here. That speaks volumes of the workers that we have behind the scene. I'll, I'll talk about that later, but thank you to all of the pastors. Um, after uh, Pastor Yancey and One Accord conclude, then you will give your attention to the video monitors, and after that, we will stand and receive the ministering gift of Sister Valerie Carter at that time. Let's say amen for... Amen. Come on, let's give God praise all over this sanctuary one more time. Hallelujah. How many love the Lord in this place? I say, how many love the Lord in this place? Isn't he wonderful on tonight? But don't you think the Lord deserves a wonderful praise? Can we just take about 30 seconds and let's open up our mouth and magnify God? Come on, don't pat it, kick it, don't play with it. If you know he's been good to you, you want to give him some glory right now. If you know he's an able God, you want to thank him right now. In fact, because he's given you one more day, you want to open up your mouth and just tell him, thank you, Lord, for one more opportunity. Tell him, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, let's honor God for the greatest bishop on this side of heaven. Bishop Marvin L. Wines, God bless you, sir. You are wonderful. Amen. To his lovely wife who stands with him so faithfully. Amen. Sister Deneen Wines, Lady Wines, give God praise for her. Hallelujah. God bless you. To our international mother, let's go crazy for her. God bless you, Mother Wines. Hallelujah. All right, Bishop, I know you said we got to wait till Thursday, but the, the boys won't be here Thursday. Yeah, they got to. So we can do it tonight. <laughs> he said, you'll get me a group for Thursday. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, how many feel like stomping on the devil right here? How many in this room can say, I'm tired of the devil messing with me and my family? Some of y'all sitting there. I got something for you. Come on, come on, come on. Everybody put them hands together. Come on. Yeah. 
Sick and tired of the enemy messing with you. Let me see your hand. You're just, you're just, you're just tired, just tired. Well, for those of y'all sitting there acting real bougie, if he's not messing with you, that's a good sign he must already have you. Because he come to tear the kingdom down and he'll try any kind of way he know how. But how many know the Bible said that we can bruise his head with our feet tonight? Anybody feel like stopping on the devil? I got my two babies right there. I know they're going to help me. I need about 50 more of y'all in here to get on up. Yeah. Everybody get on up. 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 Oh, he ready. Everybody get on up. I need y'all to find y'all good legs. One accord, let's do it. Come on here, everybody. Stop on the dance. 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 Stop on the dance.
mighty good to me. Been mighty good. Every time I turn around, he keeps right on making ways. Every time I turn around, keep right on opening doors for me. I don't know if I'm the only one in this room tonight that can can say through it all, God's been real good to me. Yes, he has. Well, I know I gotta move on, but I, I'm starting to feel real good now. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul shouts hallelujah. Do me a favor and I'm going to move on. Catch your neighbor by the hand real quick and I want you to shake their hand like a salt shaker. Shake that hand like it got power. Yeah. Shake that hand like you've been anointed. Yes, sir. Shake that hand like you got the victory. Come on, man. Y'all still sitting there. Shake that hand like you've been saved. Shake that neighbor's hand. Hey. Sanctified. Yeah. Filled. Yeah. yeah. With the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Shake that hand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I know I got to go. Ooh, Lord. But grab that neighbor one more time yeah. and just say, neighbor, oh, neighbor. If, you wanna know if you wanna know what a 21st century miracle look yes, like, sir. tell me, say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, neighbor, oh, neighbor, neighbor, oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. take a good look at me. Tell two or three people I'm still here. I'm still here. Okay, let's move. I'm still here. I'm sorry. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. I I'm do still here. Don't don't do that. I'm sorry. I'm still here. Don't don't. don't. I... Bishop, we got home training. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. But this could be my last time. I really don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. Yes, sir. But while I'm here, I just wanna tell them thank you. Lift your hands and tell them thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's do keep my mind. We're gonna move on. so much going on in the world today and people right at the edge of letting it all go one day I sat on the edge of my bed and I told the Lord I said Lord hey, in these troubling times One more verse. 
Pastor Douglas. When I, I'm so confused. Keep my mind. Keep my mind. Pastor Trice. When I done all I can do, and I ain't got nobody else, nobody to turn to. That's when I need you the most. Keep my Keep mind. My mind. I'm calling on your name because I I gave you my heart. I gave my heart to you. It belongs long to you. To you. No one in the world. Nobody but you, Jesus. Wonderful family, but they can't love me like Jesus. I got a few good friends in my life, but they can't love me like Jesus. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Lord, I look high and low. Said I couldn't find nobody But I'm so glad I got a savior Who looks high, sits high and looks low Promised to always be right there Never to leave me, never to forsake me And I'm glad about it, I got a friend Who stick closer than a brother tonight No Lift your hands and worship. I'm getting ready to go. Let's just set the atmosphere for the word. You are our Alpha and Omega. We were shall you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. I wish I had some more people in the room that would rest on their feet, lift their hands and say, You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you. If you know it, help me. I'm gonna go to my seat. Come on, we give you all. We give. Give you all the glory. Give you all the glory. 
Come, that's why we're here. We worship. One more time with no music. And we're going to lift it up one more time. One more time. Lift your voice and we give you all the glory. Dr. Valerie Daniels Carter is one of the most preeminent business owners in the United States. In addition to commandeering several restaurants branded operations in the United States, she has been widely recognized for her business ingenuity and is the president and CEO of V and Amp J Foods holding companies a multi-brand, multi-state operation. Valerie Daniels Carter graduated from Lincoln University with a bachelor's degree in business administration and furthered her education with a master's degree in business management from Cardinal Stritch University. Dr. Daniels Carter serves on an array of community and corporate boards. She is currently a board member of the Green Bay Packers and a minority owner of the Milwaukee Bucks basketball team. In her home city and state, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Dr. Daniels Carter and her family have built and developed a state-of-the-art complex inclusive of her church, Holy Redeemer Institutional Church of God in Christ. Along the street, Mother Daniels Way, named after her mother, is a boys and girls club, as well as buildings constructed as community meeting facilities, befittingly named the Mother Catherine Daniels Youth Center and the Jeffrey Carter Family Center in memory of her mother and husband. Dr. Daniels Carter is consistently recognized as an astute businesswoman, an achievement that bespeaks to her unyielding belief and connection to God, coupled with her commitment to honesty, excellence, and hard work. Dr. Carter is a devoted mother to Jeffrey Allen Carter II and attributes her success to her relationship with God, her family, committed employees, and true friends. Everyone, please stand and receive the ministry of Dr. Valerie Daniels Carter. Since you're standing, come on, let's give God some praise. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Father, for all things, we are thankful and grateful for your goodness and your mercy toward us. Thank you for this day. 
You didn't have to allow us to see this day, but you did. You didn't have to touch us with your hand of mercy, but you did. And for that, we are thankful. Now, this word that we shall impart to your believers, I trust that it will fall on good ground and that it will grow and nourish and allow us to be strong soldiers for the kingdom. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Certainly this evening we give honor to this esteemed leader, Bishop Marvin L. Winans. <laughs> and his lovely wife, Lady Winans. To the bedrock of it all, Mother Winans. My friend, Pastor Donnie and Pastor Ray, they're here with me. So I know I got some prayer going on up in here. Sister Cindy and to all of the pastors and our coordinator for tonight has done a phenomenal job in coordinating this service on tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Yancey, for that wonderful music selection and one accord. Didn't we enjoy them? So, let me set this house in order right now. Um, let me see what I got over here playing. So I have what I call a right shoulder, all right? When I do this, I need for y'all to do that. Wherever I am in my message, whenever y'all see me do. So why does she do that? Because I have a unique, a unique approach to my message. I get happy off my own cooking. And any time in this sermon, I might teach, I might preach, and I might I might shout. So don't look at me crazy because I teach, I preach, I shout. Come on, brother drummer, you got to drop a little tougher than that. Because I understand the value of worship and praise. I did not get where I am today by being a zombie saint. So let me, let me do all the preliminaries, Lady Winans. These prayer shawls I wear, they've been prayed over by prayer warriors all across the world. Africa, Japan. We send them out. They come back. And I call them designer prayer shawls. Uh, I'm getting ready to give y'all some of my secrets. Y'all can't tell nobody, though. <laughs> Why do you call them designer prayer shawls? Because I can wear them wherever I go. I wear them to church. I wear them to business meetings. I wear them at home in my prayer closet. When I need comforting and strength and, and I just need to know that God is with me, I throw a prayer shawl on. So when I go into a business meeting, they don't just get Valerie Daniels Carter. They don't even understand what's happening to them when I come in there with a pressure on Mother Wine. 
Because when I think of the goodness So tonight you can take some of them home with you. I've authored four books. Uh, His Business is Your Business is Where Destiny Takes You. That's a book I, I authored talking about how I got started in my career. 130 restaurants across this country. Uh, over 5,000 employees. I, I talked to you about that. If you're an entrepreneur, try to share those nuggets with you. Have a book that call, that's called from pandemic to promise, talking about God shifting us out of this state that we're in. I have a book that I've authored, and I wrote this book because I got a six foot, two, good looking son. But he was, you know, not quite where I wanted him to be. And not quite listening to the kind of music I wanted him to listen to. So I wrote this book to teach him why certain types of music motivate certain types of emotion inside of your body and how the decimals, when they're raised, what they do to you, well, you'll get it. It's called anointed offering or tainted sacrifice. And then I got my fourth book out there, and uh, y'all don't blame me for what happened to the Bucks this year. I was traveling. <laughs> when they won the championship a couple years ago, every morning, at between four and five o'clock in the morning, I would get up and write the players and the coaches a, a letter. I'd write them a nugget every day. I say, internalize this in your spirit. Get out there on this court and remember what I'm telling y'all. Well, this year, I was over in Africa, I was in Dubai, I don't know where I was, I was gone. And I came back and I and the, talked to the president of Bucks. I said, what's going on? How y'all losing? So, but it was too late by then, you know. So next year I gotta make sure I'm, I'm around because Giannis can't lose another title. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. I'm gonna talk to you all tonight from your theme and uh, his scriptural reference was Philippians, the second chapter, verses 12 and 13. Y'all going to have church with me? The Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but how much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both will and to do of his good pleasure. And if you'll allow me to just add Joshua 1 and 9 to this scripture. Joshua 1 and 9 says, uh, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. These words were given to Joshua during a critical time of transition and uncertainty. Moses, the great leader of Israel, had passed away and Joshua was entrusted with the enormous responsibility of leading the people into a new chapter and on a new journey. It was a daunting task filled with challenges, and unknowns. I believe this convocation has come to philosophically challenge us to raise our spiritual consciousness to a level that will energize and ignite us to relentlessly position ourselves to seek God for renewal 
and a higher level of anointing during these uncertain times. For over three years, we have lived and managed through one of the most devastating times known to man. Even though the government has lifted and removed many of the disruptive restraints that came with the pandemic and COVID, there still seems to be a lingering effect in the church world. Philippians is one of the epistles that was written by Apostle Paul during one of his four imprisonments. Paul wrote the letter to the Philippians to express his gratitude and affection for them and their church. They were indeed his strongest supporters in ministry. Scholars agree that Paul drafted the epistle during his two-year stay in Rome. Being under house arrest in 62 AD meant that an individual was confined to their own residence with limited freedom and movement while under constraints and surveillance. House arrest was a form of detention imposed by the Roman authorities as a means of restricting a person's activity without putting them in a traditional jail or dungeon. House arrest was often imposed on individuals who were perceived as a potential threat to the public order or whose ideas or actions challenged the Ro Roman establishment. Paul's teaching and Christian faith were seen as subversive to Roman religion and the social order of that day. That's why he was in confinement. While under house arrest, Paul was closely monitored by guards and soldiers to ensure that he was complying with the restrictions that were imposed on him. But because house arrest allowed limited engagement with people, Paul was able to share with others and communicate with the church at Philippi. I teach, I preach, I shout. Mm -hmm, I'm teaching right now. His instructions were for them to work out your soul salvation because God is working in you. You have chosen the theme revive. To be revived means to be brought back to life or to be restored back to consciousness after experiencing death, unconsciousness, or a state of non-functuality. Y'all missed my left shoulder. <laughs> Revival refers to restoration or revitalization or it helps you to bring back that thing that was dormant, stagnant, or inactive. Over the past years, many saints ended up in a motionless or stagnant stay-at-home state. We became comfortable in a spiritual environment that was lukewarm and not designed for fellowship. Saints, we are living in a time when ministry leaders are exiting at an alarming rate. That's why I commend these pastors that are here tonight. Amen. 
There is inconsistency in attendance among the body of believers. We are now witnessing paralyzing effects of mental and emotional distress. There is escalated violence, polarizing political ideologies, and unprecedented transformation of our brick and mortar places of worship into impersonable hybrid virtual platforms. We all know that virtual worship in some cases is warranted. In other words, if y'all watching me tonight and y'all at home, I hope it's warranted. But it should not be a saint's primary source of ministry if you're able to get out to church. If you got to be at home, I understand. But if you have the ability and the capacity to get yourself up, then you have the ability and the capacity to get yourself in the house. Our reliance on technology worship has escalated beyond measure. In some cases, the place of worship has shifted and instead of the altar being a place of sacrifice, it has become an intensified theatrical showcase. People have become comfortable and have no problem with replacing unified assembly with an internet or online experience. The question I have, and I got to pose it because the Lord told me to say it. Is it about the brand or is it about the blood? Are you creating a brand? while dismissing the power of the blood. Oh. Lord, revive us. Lord, revive us. Please revive us. We must be careful not to allow our souls to remain in a state of COVID. Yes. Say it one more time. We have to be careful not to allow our soul to remain in a state of COVID. Because God is calling for a higher place of worship. And I know some ministries are reporting record giving from virtual audiences and that their uh, virtual platform has increased their membership role beyond their wildest imagination, but just know, anything done in isolation requires a totally different set of rules and it brings other challenges with it. I believe people still need to be in fellowship with one another. I don't care what anyone says and I stated it earlier, I appreciate online experience and online presentation. It is good under certain circumstances. But to be honest with you, I really only want virtual when there is no other alternative. 
If I can get to the house, I want to be in the house. There's just something about being in the midst of the saints who know how to usher in worship and push us to another level of praise. There's value in me looking you in your face, hearing your testimony, hearing your echoing voices as you holler, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory to God. I preach, I teach, I shout. you when you lift your hands in the sanctuary oh my god it's just something about going to the house you know it's just like a husband when he really loves his wife I said really love her he wants to be with her. And he wants her to come home soon, baby. Because I got something for you at the house. Okay. <laughs> Woo! I I'm going to go back to my script. I say, I teach, I preach, I shout. <laughs> Today, I believe God is trying to get our attention and revive us and encourage us to return to unified fellowship. If we want to experience the comprehensiveness of God and be revived, we must remain connected. Somebody said, why? Because connectivity is one of the lifelines for spiritual growth. To grow, we must be engrafted and rooted in a strong foundation. We must commit our lives totally to Christ and have the audacity and courage to stand fast in the liberty wherein we are made free. We must engage and return to active worship an in-person worship. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Being in fellowship with one another affords us the opportunity to encourage one another, to pray for one another, to embrace one another, and to join forces with one another to defeat the enemy. The brand versus the blood. We're so worried about building the brand until we forgot that the blood still works. Woo! Anybody know the blood works? Anybody know the blood works? Anybody know the blood works? Yeah. We cannot be weary, vacillated, or weak. We must be strong and unmovable. But the Bible declares that a, a trifle cord is not easily broken. If the enemy can separate us and 
allow us to become complacent and allow us to become disconnected and, and allow us to, to, to not come into fellowship, he gets overjoyed and happy. When we're not aligned with the ministry and the purpose of the ministry, that makes him happy. But how many of you know he's already been defeated? We must be wise enough and recognize the devices of the devil. We're not ignorant concerning his methods and schemes. And if you fall in short, God is faithful to restore you and revive you and redeem you because he knows the desire of your heart. Well, I'm almost done. I'm getting ready to turn this corner. In reviving ourselves, we also strengthen our brethren. Strengthening one another is a commandment that I believe we all have a responsibility to live by because we're each other's keeper. Used to be a time in the old church, I don't know how many of y'all came from the old church, but when I was growing up in the church, after you have walked two miles to get to church, you know, y'all got all these fancy cars and y'all Uber to church now and Lyft to church. And, but we used to walk to church, catch the bus, then have to walk another mile to get to the church. And we would get to the church. And my mother would look around. And she would say, oh, I don't see sister so-and-so. And then back then they didn't have cell phones. So you had to get back on the bus and go and check on sister so-and-so to make sure everything was all right. Got back to her house. Is everything all right? Come on, let's go to church. All of us got back on the bus and went back to church. Now y'all started at eight and y'all want to be out at nine. Okay, okay. We're each other's keepers and we're responsible for each other. Listen, there's a young lady at my church who is an adamant praiser. She gets excited. She's exuberant when she praises God because she's a true worshiper. When she starts engaging in praise and starts beginning to exhort the Lord, the service is lifted and others in the sanctuary join in in praise with her. Y'all remember that? There's a lift. There's a, the body is strengthened. Souls are, are seemingly lifted because one person decides to ignite the fire in the house. Some of the souls that seem dead and dormant, when that girl get up and starts running across that altar, and you know, it was a time in the church well, we used to grab each other and pray until we prayed you through. Yeah. They ain't ready. Y'all got to watch me. Keep your eyes on the prize. Okay. a woman in the Bible named Miriam. You know Aaron's and Moses' sister. When Miriam got the T 
timbrel. And she started praising a whole camp of women got happy. And when she started praising, and she went out in the camp praising. Come here, girls. Give me about 10 girls real quick. I want some praises, though, all. Y'all some praises? So, so this is what happened. I preach, I teach, I shout. I preach, I teach, I shout. I preach, I teach, and I shout. So when Miriam got her tambourine, she started, somebody got a tambourine in there. Bring me that tambourine. Y'all say y'all came to have church tonight. Let me tell y'all something. I didn't come tonight as the owner of the Bucks. I didn't come tonight as a board member of the Green Bay Packers. But I came tonight as a saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost feel praiser because I know when I praise the Lord, he inhabits, he, he gets in the midst of, he, he changes my situation. He so, what did Miriam do? She said, I got the victory. Anybody got the victory? I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Anybody got the victory? Then, let's do this for a second.
he's done for me. Think of his goodness, how he died on Calvary. Sit on down. Listen, let me talk to these pastors for a minute. Pastors, when y'all go back to y'all church, if y'all don't have but five people that come back, Make sure those five come back. Praising, magnifying, and glorifying the name of the Lord. Don't let them come back talking about where the people. Tell them, I'm not looking for the people. I'm looking for the presence of the Holy Ghost. I'm looking for the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm looking for an anointing. I, I, I. I told my praise singers, Bishop, I said, if don't nobody come back, God ain't got to worry about being alone. Because as long as I can lift my hands, as long as I can lift my voice, as long as I can give him praise, as long as I can shout hallelujah. So, Y'all please sit down. It's, it's rude to stand when someone's speaking.
Listen. Your spiritual toolkit has got to be filled with prayer, fasting, giving, and praise. I'm going to come down here and say that. Because I think they believe me up there. Oh, yo, yo, yo. you can't do. Ain't no door you can't walk through. seats. Listen, I, 
before we leave tonight, I'm going to pray a unified prayer for everybody. But I promise God, when we started going through the time of separation, that I would not leave the house. And every Sunday, I didn't care where I was, I tried to make it my business to be back home on Sunday morning. And every Tuesday, I had business leaders calling me all across America. They were losing their businesses. They were having difficult times. And they said, Dr. Val, how are you making it? During the pandemic, I didn't miss one payroll. As a matter of fact, when people would tell me, my employees would tell me they had COVID, and they had the, the nerve to call and say they want to take off. I said, hold on, give me some blessed oil. I said, after I pray this prayer, then you tell me if you want to take off. No. Some of y'all said, oh, they were con contaminated. They probably was contaminated before they told me they was contaminated. So. <laughs> but I started a series on Tuesday nights called Power to Win. And some people said, you're going to do a platform for business leaders and ministry leaders, and you're going to use the foundation of the Bible? I said, absolutely. Because if we're going to make it during this time and season, you got to be sure your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. That rock is Jesus. He is the one that rock is Jesus the only one be there be there be sure your anchor holds And grips a solid, solid rock. And I know ministry leaders, sometimes you just feel like the weight is so heavy on your shoulder. And the enemy has told you that it's not worth it. You need to check out while you can. Don't allow the enemy to shift the place where God has placed you. God has placed you in leadership, lead. Even if you only have to lead with 10 people, let them be the strongest 10 worshipers. I could tell you all some stories that would make your head spin about things that have happened to me in my life. When I got ready to buy Pizza Hut, they were getting ready to do the transaction. We were at closing. I had raised my money. They had asked me for 21 million. And I told them, just close the deal. I knew I didn't have 21 million dollars at the time. Y'all did hear me when I said at the time. <laughs> Woo! But I don't look like what I've been through. So, 
Brother Dunning, Mother Winders, I knew I didn't have $21 million, but I told him to prepare the papers. See, sometimes you got to walk by faith. Faith says I'm going through even though I don't know how I'm going to come out. I so, I, I went to the closer. I had 11 million, not 21 million. Well, that was still a lot in my book. I sat down at the table. I looked at the man in the eye. I said, you're going to have to give me a note for the rest of this because I didn't bring quite what you asked me for. See, you got to know how to talk to people. And you got to have a press show on. Hey! So, I got there, sat down with my 11 million, not my 21 million, but I had folks praying all around me at home. Got to the table, I started signing papers, signing papers. Now mind you, they hadn't come expecting me to need a note, so it wasn't no note for me to sign. I call that a $10 million discount. running across this altar and, and jumping and shouting and screaming and hollering. So, the devil wasn't satisfied. Got to the last document. And I looked at the document. Now, mind you, they had picked me up in a private jet. <laughs> Taking me all the way to Wichita, Kansas. What was I doing up in Wichita? But anyway, <laughs> when I got off the plane, they opened up the door. They had rolled out a red carpet. I said, mm, I can get used to this. <laughs> I walked and got in a limousine, took, went to the closet, thought I had seen all the documents. Got to the last couple documents. They said, you got to sign this. I said, what is this? They said, we want you to sell liquor. <laughs> now mind you, I had gotten my $10 million discount. <laughs> had my team ready to go. And they brought up what they thought was something easy for me. So I told them, I said, excuse me one moment. And I got up from the table. And I went into the bathroom. And I started praying. I said, Lord, I know you didn't bring me this far. I said, but if you did, I trust you anyway. Then the devil spoke to me. Now, I got a brother called Bishop Sedgwick Daniels, and he's saved. But I got another brother. <laughs> called Attorney John Daniels. And he ain't quite been redeemed. <laughs> Y'all keep praying. So the devil told me, put the liquor license in John's name and close the deal. <laughs> hey! But then I stopped rebuking the devil. 
Because if I'm ever going to be a testimony to John and a, a witness to John, he'll never forget that moment. So I went back in the room and I said, look, by this time, see, when y'all read my book, y'all will get it. There's a Val, there's a Sister Carter, and there's a Mrs. Carter. By this time, Mrs. Carter had come to the table. And I said, look, I'm not going to sign this document to sell liquor because I'm sanctified. And the Lord told me, if you make a stand for what is right, you'll never be in want for anything. So they looked at each other. I slid the document back on the other side of the table. And they handed me a case full of keys for 61 Pizza Hut restaurants in New York. So don't tell me what God won't do if you're obedient and you live and you give him a life. But what y'all need to understand, I have been a tither since the age of six. My mother taught me how to tithe. And every two weeks, Bishop stands up and looks me in the face and says, will a man rob God? <laughs> when you pray, when you fast, when you give, and when you praise, God will open the portals of heaven and pour you our blessings and you won't have room enough to receive it. Now I do want to set something straight here in Detroit. I did own the Burger Kings here in Detroit for about 25 years. But I sold them. Because the Lord told me to sell them. Not because Man had any mandates on me, but just as soon as I sold those restaurants, the operator that's just shut them all down took over. I don't have nothing to do. Only thing I want, I did keep the real estate, you know. <laughs> Open or close, I want him to pay me my rents. But anyway. Y'all miss that. That's a that's a testimony. Oh my. Why am I saying all this? Because I'm trying to help you to understand how to increase your faith. Faith cometh by hearing. And for those of you that are listening. I want you to be a sower tonight into this convocation. I'm here because I want to be here. I need to be here. And I need to be revived. You're here because you wanted to be here. You need to be here. And you need to be revived. I'm going to ask that you would stand all over this building with me. We're going to sow into this convocation. And I don't want you to sow something that's merely an offering. I want you to sow a sacrifice tonight. And if you have $300 on you tonight, I'm going to sow 1000 
If you got a thousand, you can sow a thousand. If you don't have a thousand, I'm not talking to you. Because what you all are doing in feeding the community and reaching out is what God is calling for us to do in this season. And there's going to be a separation, the Lord said. Hmm, she had another book, oh she. When he comes to make up his jewels, he's going to say, that one's mine, that one's mine, that one's mine, and that one's mine. Some of you have lost so much over the last several years. I've lost three brothers and a sister. But I'm still here. I will tell y'all this story, it's real quick. When I got ready to get married, I, I had a wonderful husband. Yeah. Jeffrey Carter, oh man. And he said to me, Val, now mind you, he could not sing. He said, I wrote you a song, I wanna sing to you at the wedding. I said, oh my Lord, I paid all this money for a wedding, I, everything in order, he gonna sing? So I went to my brother, I said, Bishop, Jeff wanna sing. He said, don't worry about it, me and Daryl got it. And this was back in 1984, 1982. Jeff was standing at the altar getting ready to sing, and he started crying. And all of a sudden, I heard a voice, the voice of your bishop, Bishop Winans start singing Jeff's song. He said, I found what I was looking for. I don't have to search no more. And I don't remember the rest of it because I'm old. <laughs> I got to listen to the tape again. I know the end says, Valerie, Valera, Valerie, I love you. That's all I need was to know that I had an advocate and somebody that stood in the gap for my friend. You have an advocate tonight. Somebody that sees your pain, your trouble, your trials. And all the Lord is saying is, if you would just trust me. So, and watch your seed grow. So for those of you that have a special gift, and I'm going to receive all gifts, I want you to make a, a center aisle. For those of you that have a special gift, if you can give at the level of 300, if you can give at the level of 1,000, I want to see you in this aisle. Come on, let's celebrate these leaders. I'm gonna wait a moment. I'm gonna touch and agree with them that whatever they're asking the Lord for, God would do it. I'm gonna wait a few more moments. It don't take me long. For those that are sowing at the level of 300 or 1,000, I'm asking everybody else to get at least a $100 seed in your hand. And for those of you that may not have 100, get the best gifts you can and the closest you can to 100. But I'm going to come down and I'm going to touch and agree with you that whatever you're asking God for, that he will do it. And then, because I have reckless faith, I'm going to ask God to seed 
the seed that you shall sow, that it will return a thousandfold. So whatever you're sowing tonight, I'm going to ask for a thousandfold fold return. And not many hints, days, God's going to do it. Because he's just that kind of God. Some of you all need miracles. God's going to do it. Father, for these your givers that will plant into ministry tonight, I pray that you will give them the desire of their heart or give them a heart to desire what you have for them and a thousandfold return in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Won't you bring your gift and I'm going to touch you.
tonight. I am so uh, blessed to have an opportunity to have sown in that anointing. And if you have not done it, this is the night to do it. You watching, I'm telling you, this is the time to sow in that type of anointing. While we were up here on the pulpit, and I know you down there, I felt the tangible presence of God, like a blanket coming upon me. That is rare. And when you have that type of anointing, you want to sow into it. Amen? Amen. And pastors, I heard the Lord say that this is the season of the flashpoint. With the anointing on the flame of the woman of God, a flashpoint is when the room is the temperature of the room gets hot and hot and hot, that anything that can be burned or will burn and so that anointing that was upon her ignited so many of us. And we have to take this back with us. And I even heard the Lord said that while we were here, God was already working it out there. We just have to receive that and believe it. I'm believing God for some great things, for properties, for things that are kingdom. And this woman of God is kingdom minded. Receive that and hold on to it. Let's give Dr. Valerie another hand praise. The woman of God, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Whew. She said something I'm gonna end, but just so rich. The brand versus the blood. My God, well, pastors, when we go back, make sure you preach in the blood. It's not about you, but it's all about him. Amen, amen. Well, you can join us in person and on Facebook and YouTube tomorrow at 8 a.m. for Morning Glory. And then again for the Hour of Power at noon. And then we'll be back here at 7 p.m. for worship service.
But remember, you must register for the general 9 a.m. session, so make sure that you register. Also, the two ladies that I'm paying for, make sure you see me right afterwards. I want to give you your money for the discount, but make sure you get your Pastor Reva special tonight. And you go to the bookstore. That special is only for tonight only. And while you're in the bookstore, how many were blessed by Pastor Yancey in one accord? And his two beautiful daughters were standing here, beautiful. He has his product in the bookstore, and so does Dr. Valerie. Make sure you go visit the bookstore for that as well. And also tonight, you can go to the Gospel Bristro for some wonderful food. There is a backdrop also for you to take photos as well. Let's fellowship tonight, and let's enjoy one another. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give God another hand praise for the word that came forth tonight and for the impartation. And let's give our bishop another hand praise. Y'all can stand to your feet. Amen. Ooh, I'm so full. Father, we give you glory and honor, and we thank you for tonight. Father, we thank you for the word that has come forth in power and in demonstration. Father, we thank you that the enemy's voice has been silenced and we have our marching orders. That as we go forth, oh Father, that we go forth in the spirit that you've called us to go forth, that we will pray, that we would fast, that we will give, that we will praise, that the pulpit will be a place, oh God, for your anointing and not for the brand. Father, I ask that you would touch each individual under the sound of my voice. I ask that you would bless them right where they are that as they leave this place, they do not leave your presence until we come together tomorrow, Father. Protect them and keep them, and we give you all the glory and the honor. In the precious, matchless name of Jesus, we give you honor. And everybody say amen and amen. You're dismissed.